So for the auscultation of the heart, um, each murmur of the heart murmurs uh, has a place where it's heard best, where if you put your stethoscope, then it you, you'll be able to hear it uh, much better than any other place um, on the chest a wall or the body generally. So um, uh, we have four main valves or four main areas, let's say. Um, this is the aortic area, this is the pulmonary area, and this is the tricuspid area and the mitral area. And the reason why those are um, uh, be drawn this way is, for example, let's look at the um, aortic area. Uh, if we take a look at this, image over here then we know that this is the aorta right so uh, this is the aortic valve right because this is the left ventricle so blood from the left ventricle going into the aorta actually flows this way so it flows this way it goes up all the way up here so that's why if you take a look at the um, um, image over here then the aortic area uh, is this pink color this is where we can hear the aortic murmurs or uh, whatever um, murmurs these murmurs actually the aortic stenosis uh, aortic stenosis flow murmur th that is the physiologic murmur and also aortic valve sclerosis so both of these murmurs are heard best here in the aortic area and both both of these murmurs are considered systolic um, for the other area that is in uh, blue over here so this blue color is the um, pulmonic area and if we take a look at the pulmonary, pulmonary um, uh, valve, so this is the pulmonary valve, okay, and this is the pulmonary artery. And there you go, because blood is coming from the outside, uh, from inside of the right ventricle into the outside, then it will go all the way up here. Okay, from, let me use this cutter, so there you go, this is how blood is moving. So that's why it makes sense if we um, um, hear um, the um, murmurs over here so they're moving this way okay and that is the pulmonic area and we ca we can hear over here the pulmonic stenosis um, atrial septal defects and uh, atrial septal defects from much more so basically um two murmurs uh pulmonic stenosis and atrial septal defect that is the opening between um, um both of the uh, atria so um both of these are considered systolic ejection murmurs also, we have uh, the T, that is the tricuspid area. It's this purple color uh, shade. So uh, this is the tricuspid area. And uh, if we take a look at the uh, actual heart over here, then this is, okay, give me a second. This is the tricuspid valve. It's right over here. So it makes sense if we can hear its murmurs over here. There you go, because here is the tricuspid. So this is its place specifically, and this is where we can hear its um, murmurs best. So the tricuspid area, um, area, we can hear the holosystolic murmurs and also the diastolic murmurs. So the holosystolic murmurs, just like tricuspid regurgitation or ventricular septal defect, ventricular septal defect is basically an opening between the two ventricles, so it's always there regardless it's um, diastole or systole. Um, for diastolic murmurs, it's the murmurs that we only hear um, during diastole, and these are, um, for example, the tricuspid stenosis, if we have a stenosis tricuspid valve. For the um, last, um, no, actually not the last, but it, let's say the mitral area, it's the ap apex of the heart, so we know that this, okay, let's take a bigger look over here. So this outline, is the outline of the heart right okay and over here is the base of the heart and over here is the apex of the heart okay so the base is above over here and the apex is below so um uh mitral valve is this nice valve over here and if you think about it or actually take um look just by looking we can see that this mitral valve is the kind of the closest valve to the um, 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 apex okay because this is apex and this is the base of the heart okay so um, and of course blood flows from the left atrium into the left ventricle so if blood flow through the uh, mitral valve goes this way 
Um, so that's why we can hear it all over here. Uh, it's this green shadow. This is where we hear the uh, murmurs in the mitral area. So um, in the mitral area, we can hear a systolic murmur and a diastolic murmur. For the systolic murmur, like mitral vegetation or mitral valve prolapse, and for diastolic, we can hear the mitral stenosis. So all of these are related to the mitral valve, okay? Um, while, uh, well, there's an area over here, um, it's in, um, let me clear up all of this mess, okay? So this uh, green space, dark green, no, that's, that's the mitral that they said, oh, that, not really, oh, oh, there you go, there you go, this is what I'm looking for, uh, okay, so this is the sternum. That's the shadow of the sternum over here. And the area we're going to talk about is the left sternal border. So this is the left side of the body, and this is the right side of the body. And now we are talking that there are some uh, heart murmurs that are heard best on the left side of the sternum. So these are systolic murmurs um, that we hear only during systole and the diastolic murmurs. So for the systolic murmurs, we can hear over here the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is only one murmur. And for diastolic uh, murmurs that we can hear at the left sternal border, uh, that's the aortic regurgitation and phonetic regurgitation. So both of these um, valves regurgitating this one and this one. Okay, so these are for um, where where it's best to uh, listen to the cardiac murmurs. Now uh, there are a few maneuvers that we can do to the patient, or the patient can do them themselves um, in order to increase or um, some murmurs. Or they do some physiological changes to the body and to the hemodynamics of the patient, so we can hear better with or less better with these um, maneuvers. So uh, for First, we have the standing or the Valsalva maneuver. We know that the Valsalva is, um, as I remember, probably uh, more than one phase. So this Valsalva that we're talking about, now we're talking about the strain phase. So it's either the patient is standing or we, he is doing this training phase of the Valsalva. And we know that is associated with an increase in intrathoracic pressure. So, um, okay, if we take a look over, over here, um, this decreases the preload, which means this decreases the amount of blood that is returning into the right atrium. This is the right atrium, this is the left atrium, this is the right ventricle, this is the left ventricle over here. So um, because we are using these maneuvers, the standing or the straining phase of the valsalva, this decreases the preload, which means this decreases the left ventricular uh, volume. So uh, what is happening here is that we know that this is the inferior vena cava, this is um, the superior vena cava, and in our case, uh, we are increasing the intrathoracic pressure, so we are reducing the preload, that is the amount of blood returning into the right atrium. So now the right atrium has just a little bit of blood, and then that blood is of course going to move into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it's going into the lungs, of course, uh, right and left lungs. And then from the lungs where there is uh, like the oxygenation and um, everything. So from the lungs, it flows back, the oxygen blood flows back into the left side of the heart. Now we have the oxygen blood uh, here. But of course, because the blood that has went into the lungs is just little because um, uh, not too much has been sent to the lungs, and then of course the, the, the blood that is at the lungs sending back to the heart is also just a little bit. So now we have in the left atrium also a little bit of a blood that is the same moving into the left ventricle. So eventually in the left ventricle, we only have a little amount of blood. Uh, it's reduced blood within. So the amount, of course, that is moving from the left ventricle into the circulation is also going to be um, decreased, into the aorta is also going to be decreased. So um, uh, the murmurs that increase with this maneuver, um, that we can hear better with this maneuvers, are like the mitral valve prolapse. 
that is due to the reduced left ventricular volume with an earlier mid-diastolic click. Uh, the other thing that we can hear better is the um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy also due to the decrease in the left ventricular volume. So what is happening here is this left ventricle, if it's prolapsing, okay, so because this left ventricle, let's say it's a prolapsing, uh, if it's too much blood within the left ventricle over here, then it would override or overcome or be louder than the murmur of the um, um, mitral valve prolapse. But luckily with these maneuvers, the um, left ventricle only has a, like a small amount of blood within it. So it, these murmurs can be heard better because nothing is of subtracting their sound on auscultation. Um, the same thing goes for um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, because um, it, it, let's say the wall is hypertrophied over here. So if the if the left ventricle contains a lot of blood, then it won't be uh, quite obvious. But now the um, left ventricle has only a, a low amount of blood, then the the left ventricle um, hypertrophy. Uh, can, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can be heard better. The murmur caused by the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can be heard uh, better. Uh, for the murmurs that decrease, that we cannot hear very well with the Valsalva maneuver, the straining phase, and with the standing, are most murmurs actually. Um, that is because you, there is a decrease in the flow through the stenotic or regurgitant valves. So let's say that over here we have like um, a stenotic valve or a regurgitant valve over here. So what is happening is that there is only a less amount of a blood moving into the heart and out of the heart. So um, they will not be affected. I mean, it, it, the stenotic valve wouldn't actually make uh, too much noise because even though it's stenotic, the amount of the blood moving through it is also a little bit, so it doesn't make any difference. I mean, it's not too much that it's moving or um, having to, I don't know, produce a really high sound because it's only a, a small amount of blood, so it can pass truly really fine. And if it's a regurgitant valve as well, then the valve doesn't have to move uh, as much. Only a small amount of blood, it can move on peacefully. So that um, most murmurs actually um, decrease in um, in... Uh, on auscultation, that is due to the decrease of the flow through them uh, because they're you know, very good, then so it would make, actually make a lot of difference if there's a low amount of blood moving within them. Uh, another maneuver that we're having is the uh, passive blood raise. That is when the patient uh, um, is not doing it himself. That's when we are raising their legs, um, let's say one leg for now. So that would um, um, increase the preload. Um, and also increase the left ventricular volume. So what is happening is that um, we are um, basically raising one leg of the patient against the gravity and against the gravity, of course, let me clear up all this mess. So this was the right atrium, um, this is the left atrium, um, left ventricle, this is the right ventricle. So because it's um, against the gravity, um, we are raising the leg upwards, there is more blood actually going back into the heart from the inferior superior vena cava, and this is, let's say, um, inferior um, vena cava over here. Uh, so a lot of blood is moving into the right atrium, okay? And then that very high amount of blood within the right atrium now is going to move into the right ventricle and of course do the whole thing again go into the lungs and then from the lungs into the heart again and that means we are having a really a big amount of blood uh in in the left ventricle eventually so a lot of blood is moving within the heart a lot of blood is reaching the left ventricle is, uh, eventually. So this increase in left ventricular volume, uh, that's for passive leg raise. There's another maneuver that can do the same, okay? That another maneuver is um, squatting. So um, basically it's like uh, you're pushing uh, your legs close to the trunk, so you're minimizing your size. 
that also would increase the preload that would also uh, uh, bring more blood back into nearby atrium and that more blood is of course going into the right ventricle then to the lungs then from the lungs into the um, um left atrium and that amount of course reaches the left ventricle eventually causing a lot of blood within the left ventricle so the murmurs that increase in um, in sound with this maneuver are most murmurs because now we have a huge amount of blood moving through these um, um, uh, valves. So whatever the problem within the valve is, let's say it's a stenotic, okay? So it has a really teeny tiny opening because it's stenotic, but still we are having too much blood that is leaving through this um valve so uh, now this valve has to produce like a really um loud sound that we can hear on auscultation so most murmurs um increase because there is an increase in the flow through the stenotic or regurgitant valves okay but the murmurs that decrease is just the contrary is with what what would be here in a mitral valve prolapse or the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And the reason for that, quite obvious, is because we said that the mitral valve prolapse or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are best heard when there is low amount of blood within the left ventricle. But now, over here, we have a high amount of blood within the left ventricle. So we will not hear them very good. So we can say they are the reverse, okay? The mitral valve and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, they are reverse of most murmurs, okay? So that's for squatting. For handy grip, um, handy grip is, let's imagine um, um, a handshake. Some, some, somebody's shaking both of his hands, like handshaking himself, okay? And pulling their hands against each other. So that would uh, constrict the arterioles within the hands, okay? So, um, so this is a hand. And this is another hand. I know it's a very weird looking hand, okay? So um, if, if this patient is just bringing, actually pulling, they're like attached to each other, he's hand shaking himself. So um, now pulling, okay? That would constrict the arterioles in the hands so if we are constricting the arterioles within the hands that means we are increasing the afterload okay uh, because we know that um, the vascular resistance is mainly dependent on the arterioles so if these arterioles are constricting that means the vascular resisting uh, resistance is increasing due to this constriction so um, that would increase more than one time, like um, really increase the afterload. The afterload is what is meant by the afterload. Let me clear up all this mess. So this was the left atrium. This is the uh, left ventricle. This is right ventricle. This is the right atrium. So the afterload is uh, what we see in hands let's say we are increasing the afterload because we are constricting the arterioles in the hands and eventually the hands are attached somehow to the aorta okay so that means we are increasing the force that the left ventricle needs to push against okay so the aorta is attached to the left ventricle and then by the other side is attached to the uh, peripheries so uh, increasing the amount of the blood that um, the amount of the pressure or the resistance that the left ventricle needs to push through means it's harder now for the left ventricle to open the aortic valve over here. So now the process is hard because we are increasing the pressure within the aorta due to the um, constricting of the arterioles in the hands. So that would lead to an increased reverse flow across aortic valve um, that it increases the left ventricular volume. So um, because now it's really 
hard for the left ventricle to push open the um, aortic valve over here so some of the blood that has moved can actually move outside of the left ventricle fine and peacefully but some of it has to go back into the left ventricle uh, because it's not really easy for it to pass so the left ventricle is doing its best but even though some of the blood is just going back into it because the aorta is actually stronger now because we have increased the afterload so this means that the left ventricle now is getting too much blood from the normal pathway that is the left atrium so that is normal and then there is this unexpected increase of the blood pressure of the of the volume that is coming back from the aorta so now the left ventricle has much more blood it has a high amount of blood so um that is the increase in the left ventricular volume so um what increases with this maneuver is most other left-sided murmurs like aortic regurgitation mitral regurgitation and ventricular septal defects so all the murmurs or actually most of the murmurs that are on the um, um left side of the heart just like if we are having um an aortic regurgitation over here or mitral regurgitation over here or a vsd that is ventricular septal defect where there is an opening between the left ventricle and the right ventricle um for the murmurs that decrease with this um, maneuver is aortic stenosis okay because that would decrease the transthoracic valve pressure gradient and also the um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy would be decreased due to the increase in blood ventricle so for the aortic stenosis let's say that this okay this valve is normal this valve that is the aorta is stenotic this time okay and the okay let me clear up all this mess but we said that this patient is using the hand grip maneuver so still in the aorta we have an increased afterload so there is an increased pressure within the aorta okay and at the same time the left ventricle is having too much blood within it so the left ventricle has also a high pressure so now high pressure over here of the left ventricle with against the high pressure of the um aorta there is no much difference okay there is no much difference between the two pressures between the pressure of the left ventricle and the pressure of the um aorta so because this time um we are decreasing the pressure difference between the left ventricle that already is tough and strong and trying to push out of it and then also the aorta this time because of the hand grip a grip is being tough and hard and trying to uh, resist the movement of the uh, blood from the left ventricle so we are minimizing the pressure difference that's why we don't hear this um, um murmur of aortic stenosis uh, quite well in the hand in the hand grip uh the same thing goes for um hypertrophic cardiomyopathy there is a lot of blood within the left ventricle and we said that if there's a lot of blood in the ventricle it would overcome or kind of hide the um, murmur of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy the last maneuver that we have is the inspiration so inspiration means we are uh filling our lungs with air and so these are the lungs and here's the diaphragm below them okay um in inspiration we are actually moving the diaphragm downward in order to enlarge the lungs in order to let them have or more blood coming into them okay so because this a lot of oxygen or or air actually going into these lungs that would decrease 
the um, um, the intrathoracic pressure okay so uh, because we are decreasing the intrathoracic pressure that means there is no much pressure on the superior and inferior vena cava okay we are actually releasing the pressure from around these two uh, main um, vessels because we are decreasing the intrathoracic pressure that is a, um, due to aspiration so what we are doing actually is we are increasing the venous return to the right heart so again now it's easier for the blood to flow back into the right atrium so it's really easy because it's surrounded by a decrease in the intrathoracic pressure um well uh let me clear up this mess. So, yes. So what we said is, is okay. Uh, okay. The right atrium. This is left. Okay. This is right ventricle. This is um left ventricle this is left atrium and we said that we're um increasing the amount of a blood that is going back into the right atrium um, and most of the right-sided murmurs uh are heard over here um like are heard better over here because amounts of blood that moves into the right ventricle from the right atrium is higher now so there is much blood moving into the right ventricle so if we are having a problem with this valve then it would be easier to hear and also if we have a problem with this valve that is the palming valve it's easier to hear as well because the amount of blood flowing within these diseased valves is much bigger so um and and the murmurs of course that decrease with this sound uh with this maneuver i mean are most of the left-sided um, murmurs these are the murmurs on this left side so uh, either with the aortic uh, valve or with the mitral valve and um, that should be it